March 10, 2017 uh, is the birthday of one of my dear friends, uh, Crystal Washington, aka Sugar Mama. She passed away in January of 2017. I don't remember the exact date. But on March 10th, which was a Friday, um, I was here at my salon and this lady came by for me to get a tribute shirt. You know how we do, you know, RIP, you know, whoever has passed. So she made shirts for Sugar Mama because that following day, March 11th, we we're going to do like a little memorial thing for her. So. The lady comes to bring me my shirt. When I stand up to greet her, I get dizzy. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, this is weird. Why am I getting dizzy? So I didn't think too much of it. It will only last for like not even two seconds. So I get up to greet the lady, give her a hug, get my shirt. And then I'm still wondering in the back of my mind, why did I get dizzy? So I'm thinking, well, baby, I'm hungry. So it's Lent, Lent season, and you know, you eat your fish. So my mom had ordered me a Lenten dinner from one of the local Catholic churches and I ate my dinner and it was it was fried tilapia, um, potato salad, green beans, and some bread. I didn't eat the bread, but I still didn't feel well. So then I got dizzy again the next day and the next day and the next day. So March 10th just marks that very first time that I got dizzy. And it's almost, I look at it like maybe Sugar Mama was like, girl, you better wake up. <laughs> you better see what's going on with your health. And uh, so that's that's the significance of March 10th. And that kind of leads into my, my story, my testimony. Okay, so I got dizzy on March 10th, and then I want to say maybe that following week, we had a leadership conference at our church. And so we go to the conference, and the first night was like a Friday night, so they had food for us. They had like red beans and rice and fried chicken and stuff like that. And they usually try to not, they usually try to not make anything with pork because we don't eat pork, so that's fine. So I ate that, and I just still was just not feeling that great. So I remember at the end of the leadership conference for that day, I got so dizzy and like kind of disoriented and I remember like people around me and it was very foggy and I was trying to play it off because I didn't want to seem like I was rude but something was going on with me and people were hugging me and saying hi and I was just like what is going on so then the following day go to the conference and they had Chick-fil-A so I had my Chick-fil-A and everything and as the day went on, I was telling Chris, I said, Chris, I'm just still not feeling well. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. So we ended up leaving early because of that. We were tired and just weren't feeling well. So the elevators, we were letting people who really needed to get on the elevator use the elevator. So we were taking the stairs to go downstairs. And I just remember that I almost fell down the stairs because I was that dizzy. And I was like, okay you have to go to the doctor like you can't ignore this anymore it's not because you're hungry it's not because you're tired it's not because of any of these things that you've told yourself and you know if you google it you know google you don't think you die tomorrow so i have been needing to go to the doctor for a while so with that happening i was like i gotta go to the doctor but the doctor i went to she was so popular and so busy that she couldn't see me for two weeks so that's what I had to do in those two weeks, I was just so scared and so nervous, like wondering like what is going on with me. Okay, so I finally go to the doctor. Mr. Chris was kind enough to go with me, you know, for moral support. He didn't go in the office, in, in the actual examining room with me. He waited in the waiting area. So I get to the doctor, and what is the first thing they do? The nurse comes in, and they weigh you, right? Well, I hate scales. I loathe scales. I think scales are the spawn of the devil, and I hate them. So I hadn't weighed myself in I don't know how long, right? So I get on the scale. And I'm almost 300 pounds. Now I am fun size. I'm only five, four and a half. So to carry around almost 300 pounds, that's a lot of weight. So that was my first cue that I like, okay, this is not what I'm used to. So then the nurse checked my blood pressure. And her reading was a little high, but I'm like thinking, well, it's the, you know, I'm still in the night. It's the nurse. She she don't know. We'll see when the doctor comes in. So the doctor comes in and I tell her about what all I have going on. And let me also rewind. 
it ended up getting so bad the weekend before I was to finally go to the doctor. It got so bad that I ended up going to like a ready clinic type place. And I told the, it was like a nurse practitioner. I told him my symptoms and he diagnosed with Meniere's disease, which is like an inner ear thing. And so he prescribed, which is essentially like an antihistamine. And I was like drowsy. It's like he told me to take it three times a day. So I was like, eh, I was so out of it. So I go to the doctor and I tell her all this. And I'm relating what the what the what I had been diagnosed with. And she was like, mm, let's check your blood pressure. So she checks my blood pressure. She checks it on my left arm. She checks it on my right arm. She checks it on my left arm again. She puts it on there real tight. And she said, Miss Whaley, um, everything that you're telling me and coupled with your numbers for your blood pressure. Uh, you're at pre-hypertension level and you through your with your weight you need to lose some weight and you need to change your eating habits because this is not good that was just essentially that's why I was why I was getting dizzy was because my blood pressure was through the roof and anybody that knows and that's in the medical field or has high blood pressure you know that that's a common side effect I did not know that because again I never had any issues with my blood pressure. I had never weighed almost 300 pounds. I didn't know. And that's the day that I found out. And I was totally, totally shocked. So that's what happened. Well, she wanted me to come back in two weeks uh, prior, after the date of that initial appointment. And she said, I told her I had a blood pressure cuff and I told her the brand and she said, that's a good brand. She said, I'm giving you this log and I want you to take your blood pressure at morning, in the, mor in the morning and at night. Try to take it around the same time every day and just keep track of it on this log. I want you to come back in two weeks and I want you to bring your cuff with you so I can compare it to the cuff that's in the uh, doctor's office. And you need to work on exercise and stuff. Because I had told her, I was like, you know, I've lost weight before and lost and gained weight so many times through the years. So she was like, you need to start back exercising and make some changes. So in those two weeks, um, Chris and I, you know, when he found out my diagnosis, he was he was really sad. So we both were upset. We're like, okay, what do we do now? So we started making like some little small changes and I started walking for exercise and stuff like that. And you know, I just said, okay, in two weeks, I'll go back to the doctor and I'll see what she says. So I come back to the doctor's office after losing seven pounds, I have my log, and it hit kind of my blood pressure, it kind of slowly but surely kind of started dropping a little bit. So I come back in two weeks, and she weighs me, I lost seven pounds, she congratulates me on that. But then she tells me, well, Miss Whaley, um, well, I'm still not too pleased with these numbers, so we're going to put you on some blood pressure medication. And when she said that to me, it's like I felt like the wind was taken out of my cell. I felt like the rug was pulled from underneath me. I was like, <laughs> two weeks is not enough time for me to make any significant changes. But you know how it is, you go to the doctor, the doctor tells you what you need and you go for it. So she wrote the prescription and I just remember feeling so dejected. And she tried to tell me, well, I also have another patient. Unfortunately, I had to do the same thing. And you know, just let us know if you if your ankles swell or anything. I'm like thinking, oh goodness, so on top of everything, my ankles are gonna be swelling. I have to worry about that. And I just I just felt defeated. That's the only way I can say it. And I mean I understand people take medication every day. I mean that's it's a common thing, but I just felt like for me at that time I was 41, I feel like I'm young, I feel like I could make some changes, but two weeks was just not enough time for me to see that. So then she says, I want you to continue to monitor your blood pressure and I want you to come back in 30 days. And in 30 days, you know, we'll see what you have going on. When I got the prescription, like I was saying, I just felt, I just didn't feel good about it. I felt kind of uneasy about it. And I prayed, which is what you do 
when you know you should pray all the time but when you're in the midst of a storm and you're in the midst of these changes and you're trying to figure out what's going on you pray you go to your source and for me that's prayer that's god i had to have a talk with god to quote stevie wonder and i was like god i don't want to be on medication for the rest of my life I want to try to do everything in my in my power that I possibly can to not have to have this prescription because in my mind I felt like once you go to the doctor and once they write you a prescription that's it like you locked in for life like it's it's in my this is again this is in my mind this is in my opinion and let me give this disclaimer I'm not here to try to give anybody any medical advice advice I'm not a medical professional but just for me it just made me uneasy I took it twice. And I remember waking up in the middle of the night and I talked to Chris and I said, Chris, I prayed about it. I thought about it and I don't want to take this medication. I said, I just don't want to do it. I feel like two weeks is not enough time for me to really make any type of changes. It takes a while for any results to come. And I said, I don't want to do this. And I said, I feel like I can turn this around. And I remember Chris was very supportive of me and he was like, Georgette, you have to do what you feel is best for you. And I'm going to say again, this is what I chose to do. I'm not telling the world, don't take your medication, don't take your doctor's advice because I don't want y'all coming for me. But just for me in that moment, I felt like I can make the changes. And so that's what I did. I took it twice and I, and I never took it again. Well, aside from realizing that I need to get back to exercising, the other thing, the other huge key part of life is food, is what you consume. I am admitting right now to the world that me and Chris, over the course of the last year or two, had horrible, horrendous eating habits. I'm embarrassed to even tell you, but since I'm being transparent, I'm going to tell you. I'm talking about eating McDonald's. I'm talking about eating Burger King, Popeyes, Frenchies, KFC, um, Whataburger. Just fast, 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 fast food, fried, salty, you know, just that coupled with a sedentary lifestyle is a recipe for disaster. We realize now, like they say, hindsight is 2020. We were both in deep, deep, deep depression. As y'all can see, I'm Prince out. We love Prince. Love is not even strong enough of a word. Prince died on April 21st, 2016. When that happened, it caused a shift within both of us. And I know people think that we're crazy. You don't know Prince. You never met Prince. But Prince had been a part of my life since I was six years old. He was the first man I had a crush on. Chris had had Prince in his life since he was three years old. So in 2016, you have to remember, we lost David Boy, we lost Prince, we lost Denise Matthews, also known as Vanity, we lost Five Dog, we lost George Michael on Christmas Day, we lost pretty much my main musical icons, right? So in that, coupled with whatever other issues I had going on, it just sent me into sent us into a very dark place. I remember I had enough energy to come to work, do what I needed to do, and come home. And I was in the bed. And it was like the saltier, the better. Doritos, Cheetos, you know, just all kind of stuff. Not reading any kind of ingredients labels, not checking sodium levels. So that was not working for us. So one day me and Chris are sitting at the table and this is after I got the prescription for the blood pressure medication. And he was like, Georgette, it's the food. We gotta make some changes. And so first he suggested that we go pescatarian. If you don't know what pescatarianism is, it's where you still eat fish and seafood, but you don't eat any land animals and you still eat cheese and stuff like that. I'm like, cool word, I can hang with that. You know, I said to eat little shrimps and whatnot. Cool, okay, so that lasted for a couple of days. Then he said, we should go vegetarian. I'm like, word up, I can hang with vegetarianism. You can still have cheese, hey, I'm with it, that'll work. Then, a few more days passed. Now, Mike, this is over the course of a few weeks. He says, G, we need to go vegan. I'm like, hold on, play up. <laughs> now, let, let, let's, let's not get hasty. And I'm not gonna name names, but he had a relative that was battling cancer, dealing with cancer. And they were at the hospital, and this nurse 
Can't name no names. This nurse, the sister, she told them, she said, look, I'm going to tell y'all something. I could lose my license. I could lose my job. But I'm tired of seeing black men coming in here with cancer. I'm tired of seeing our people. I'm tired of seeing anybody with cancer. But it's just really, really, really hitting the black community. Because a lot of times we're not proactive. A lot of times we don't have the resources or the education. So it hits us hard. She was like, I'm tired of that. She said, it's the meat. It's the food. It's the dairy. This person drank a lot of milk. Why are you drinking milk? Why are you drinking a cow's milk all the time? This is what's breeding this cancer in your body. She said you need to go vegan. You need to go towards an alkaline diet. You need to drink alkaline water. You need to, you know, make your levels in your body better. And I'm telling you, this is going to work for you. So I, Chris brought that story up. And I remember when he told me that story at that time. And I'm like, okay, well, I hope he does it. Because I'm still not thinking I'm going to do it. But it all came back again in this moment of me having my health crisis, right? Now let me add that Chris has had issues with his blood pressure and he's got these little love letters from the doctor, you need to do this, you need to do that. But it took something happening to me. It took me getting dizzy two, three times a day. It took me needing him to help me up from a chair, help me out of the car. It took me not knowing when I stand up this time, am I gonna get dizzy? Is this gonna be the time that I'm gonna get dizzy? It took something happening to me for him to realize we have to make these changes. So we went vegan. I wish I remembered the exact date, but it was April of 2017 that we went totally all in, full Monty. The it's all in with being vegan. We have not strayed, we have not tiptoed out, we have we have for me, for us. We have to be all or nothing type people. When I went natural in 1994, I went to the barbershop, I told them to cut it all off, and I haven't looked back. So with my health, with veganism, I know me. When you know yourself, I'm now 42, when you know yourself, you know I can't say, oh, I'm just going to eat wings on Tuesday. No. Because then I'm going to be eating on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You know what I mean? So it had to be all or nothing. And it has been the most amazing, amazing, literally life changing life saving thing that we have ever done ever i never in a million years i used to laugh at people that were vegan i used to laugh at people that were vegetarian be like oh what they eat they must be eating air <laughs> you know just had all these little comments i would say but all oh, like the old folks say keep living baby just keep living and you'll see your day is coming sooner than you thought so that's what we did So then we had to start exercising because, yeah, you can be vegan, you can make these diet changes, but if you don't get your body moving, get that blood circulating, get that heart rate going, it's a futile effort. So in the beginning of going vegan, now this is one thing I will say, I would not suggest that anybody goes cold turkey. We went cold turkey, and the best analogy I can say is I felt like Pookie in the crack house. I felt like my body was like, what are you doing? I'm hungry. I want a hamburger. Like, I, I remember waking up one night just sweating. I'm like, do I need to go to a methadone clinic? Because, again, I had been eating meat and cheese my whole entire life. And I just took it away abruptly. So my body was not pleased. So the first week or two, I was so puny and so weak and just so pathetic. And I'll never forget one day, Chris, <laughs> he came home and he had some vegetable samosas. And he was like, well, gee, I made you some samosas. So I'm laying in bed just so dramatic. You know, Miss Joan Crawford winning her Academy Award. Oh, I think I can try one. And I just remember just my little hands shaking and I ate it. And then I ate another one. And then I ate another one. And I remember in that moment thinking, okay, girl, you going to be okay. You got to pull it together. So now we got to incorporate exercise. So once I had enough energy and got myself together, I started walking. I have always loved walking. Walking is free. You can walk anywhere in the world. And so in my building where I work, I'm like, I'm always at work. So I would go on the second floor of my building. It's like an outdoor courtyard. And I would set a timer on my phone. Everybody got a timer on their phone. And I would set it for 15 minutes. I think I started with 10 minutes. 
it was so hard to just do 10 minutes. Now, mind you, I used to walk all the time. I remember I was uh, I joined Curves back in the day. If you remember Curves and Circuit Training, I think it's still around. So I, I remember I would get like to like seven minutes and I would check my timer on my phone. I'm like, Lord, I'm not finished yet. And then I would do it again the next day. And I just kept building up. And then the next week, I'm like, Georgia, really? You can do 15 minutes. So I didn't even go to 10, 12. I just went straight to 15 minutes. And I just built up and built up and built up and built up. And then once I was able to do that, then we started going to the park and just walking walking regularly. Sometimes we walk once a day, sometimes twice a day. Started out, you know, the park we walk, they have a small trail. So we'll do the small trail. And I'll say, okay, Chris, let's do the small trail twice. And then one day we're like, you know what? We gonna do the big trip. <laughs> so we did the big trip, and I remember we were struggling and huffing and a puffing, but we did it. And every week we just did more. We did more, and we'll post pictures on Instagram and post videos. And it wasn't a matter of us trying to be vain, but it was just us sharing our journey. And that's a and that's a, a log for us to go back and look at as well. And we wanted to try to inspire other people because again, being sedentary will kill you sooner than later. We're all all gonna die but do you want to take the stairs or do you want to take the elevator I do not want to die in my own hand I don't want to kill myself for fried chicken it's not worth it anybody that has died and gone on to glory if you were to call them or contact them and ask them what is one thing you wish you had more of they would tell you time if I can add on some more time and some more years to my life and not just years healthy years you know years full of vitality then I would do it. Food has, was slowly but surely killing me and my choice of food was slowly but surely killing me. What even like when we were teenagers? What you did in your 20s and 30s, that's real cute for you. But when you get in your 40s and beyond, keep, keep, on, keep on eating that type of diet. So it's called fast food for a reason. It's fast. It's going to fastly and swiftly take you up out of here. And I can go on and on about how you go to underserved communities, all you see is fast food. There's probably one, if any, sit-down restaurants. And then you see a dialysis clinic. And then you see a liquor store. And you're going to have a pharmacy because you're going to need a pharmacy after you eat all this stuff. But that's a whole other story for another day. And I don't want to get too deep. But, yeah, so exercise. Walking is what we started with. And we loved it, and it, it loved us. It was good to us, and those pounds started coming off. After she prescribed, made, you know, did the prescription, she told me to come back in 30 days. So in that 30 day uh, time frame, that's when we had gone pescatarian and vegetarian and vegan. That's when we started exercising. That's when I only took that medication twice. Again, I don't suggest that. That was just my own personal choice. You do what works for you. And so I go back in 30 days. So I had already made in my mind that one, I was not going to tell her that I didn't take the medication. And two, I was not going to tell her that I went vegan. Because unfortunately, a lot of doctors, they ain't down with that. And the first thing they're going to say is, what about protein? What about this? What about that? I don't want anybody running interference for this because I knew this was working for me, right? So I get there. By that time, I lost 16 pounds. So I lost 7 pounds and I lost some more and then I was at 16, right? Had my little log and my blood pressure had been going down. But again, I did not tell her. Oh, I did not tell her to take the medicine. So she sees that I've lost 16 pounds. She gives me a five-star review. I'm just doing so good on Miss Well. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, your numbers are dropping. Da 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 da. And then she says, "But we're gonna keep you on the medication for a little bit longer, huh? Really?" And I said, "So how long do I have to be on medication?" Oh, we'll see. Well, we're going to call in your prescription to Walgreens. Do you want us to call it for, you, the Walgreens on Montrose, right? Do you want us to call it for 30 days or 60 days? And I said, I'm thinking to myself, I don't care if you call it for me in days because I ain't taking it. And so I said, I'm going to call it for 30 days. Are you sure? Because you're going to be on it for a while because I want you to come back in six months. I said, yeah, you call it for 60 days. And sure enough, they called it in. Uh, I guess Big Bird went and got it because I tell you, I didn't. And so I was like, and again, nothing against doctors, nothing against the medical community. Please do not 
misconstrue this. But some of it is complete and total and other utter BS. Because really? So this has no end date on it. So indefinitely. Even though you see that I'm doing, and, I, and, I, and in her defense, I'm going to say it's because I'm sure she's seen this a million times in the past, right? People do good for those few months and then they go back to whatever ways. But I'm not one of those people. And things have to be on a case-by-case -case basis. It's just on my salon. It's not a homogenized thing. Everybody has their own thing. What works on Sally Mae might not work for, uh, you know, Bobby Joe. But anyway, I digress. So, yeah, so that's what happened. She told me that I was going to have to stay on, come back in six months, and I was going to have to keep taking medication, keep checking my blood pressure, even though I had lost weight, and even though um, my numbers were dropping. So now, fast forward to, we're at 11 months now uh, of veganism and these, this lifestyle change. History has shown me and Chris that we are hard in the paint when it comes to walking and exercising. When weather is great and it's spring and summer, oh, when fall and winter hits, we fall off the wagon. So Mr. Chris, bless his heart, he got us, what, a gym membership. Imagine that. So we go to the gym. We do that as well as walking. Uh, we do the treadmill. I try to do the ab machine because I'm trying to get my abs on. I do the thigh thing. I do the uh, elliptical sometimes. I do the little stair climber. It has been amazing because that gives you an extra punch and an extra boost for this journey. So now I am like over 60 pounds down. I went from wearing a women's size 22, almost a 24, to a women's size 12, 14. I went from wearing men's shirts, double XL and XL, to small malls and mediums um i i just can't believe it like usually anything that i do i research we research google look up stuff but for some reason with the veganism thing i probably did things all backwards because i didn't really research it i just was like okay this is what we're gonna do i know you don't eat meat you don't eat dairy you don't eat any animal products and that's what we did and it has been amazing it has been an amazing journey I feel younger. I look younger. I've had moles disappear. I've had a, key, a keloid to shrink. Um, my blood pressure is normal. My skin is just popping. It's amazing. I mean, just I have so much energy. I cannot begin to tell you guys just all of the pros to this. There are no cons. There are no cons because no matter where you go, if you go to a restaurant with friends, all we do is pregame. First of all, we try to eat a little bit before we go, and then we look online. Hello? Look on their menu and see what they have. A lot of restaurants have either vegetarian options that you can modify or vegan options because this is there's like a huge onslaught of people going vegan we did not know that that was going to happen like we saw what the health but we saw what the health after we'd already started and i remember i literally cried because i felt like my whole life has been a lie i have been told that i need certain things to survive i have been told that i need to get protein for me which is a lot i have been told you know you need calcium from milk which is a lot there are other sources for these things and so I feel so good and I feel so amazing that it will be so ignorant for me to go back. Like I've met people to say, oh, I used to be vegan, I used to be vegetarian, and you know what I want to say to them? So then why did you go back? Like why would you change? And let me also add, there are fat vegans. You can be vegan and be overweight because there is vegan junk food and again, exercise, okay? If you're not moving, if you're not getting your body going, I don't care if you are eating whole grains or whatever. If you're not getting your body going, you can pick up weight. There's vegan cinnamon rolls. There's vegan cookies. No, there's all kinds of treats and snacks. There's things that are accidentally vegan, like Oreos. But the devil is a liar. I rebuke him, and I bind him. I'm co it's covered in the blood of Jesus because I'm not going back down that path because I've done all that. And I saw where it got me to. I feel like if I was to go and eat some chicken or eat some meat or eat some cheese, I'm going to get sick. I feel like my blood pressure is going to go through the roof again. I feel like I'm going to get dizzy again. I feel like I'm going to have all these problems. So for me, it's a no-brainer. I'm, I'm with this for life. <laughs> 
you know, I'm committed to this for life because I see too many positive things. What also has happened without me trying to or us trying to is that people are noticing and they're watching. You know, there's a, a quote by Gandhi that's used a million times and it's be the change that you want to see in the world. I have never to this day told somebody to go vegan. Never. And I never will because that's not a choice for me to make. But I don't have to tell them that because all they have to do is look at me and look at Chris and see where we are. Like, I have not been this size. I have not looked like this since my early 20s, if not high school, college age. I have not. I have spent my entire late 20s, 30s, going into my 40s being plus size, being overweight. And at, you know, when I got this health crisis, I was probably, I know I was obese almost morbidly obese because again my height and that weight it just equals it's too much so that's where i am today i wear my clothes to fit somebody try to throw shade and say oh your clothes are tight my clothes are not tight my clothes are my size because i've always wore had that layer and this and i have a sweater today because it's kind of cool but that's i'm all right with it you know i, I would always you know got to have this got to cover this up cover that up I'm not doing that no more. I got on some super skinny jeans today. I'm gonna wear my stuff. I don't care if don't nobody like it. As long as I feel good and I feel like I'm being respectful, that's all that matters. It has been amazing. Rings, like this ring, I couldn't get on my middle finger for many years. I had to wear it on my ring finger. Now it fits on my middle finger. My wedding ring is getting too big. You know, just so many different things that have occurred with this life and a lot of times i also tell myself why didn't you do this a long time ago <laughs> you know but hey you get where you get you know when you get there so that's where i am today happier healthier uh even my nephew bless him he sent me a message he was like oh georgia you just seem so much happier nowadays and that's because i am you know i mean i still deal with some depression from time to time but for the most part having a healthier diet and exercising, and not just exercising, but getting out, getting some sun, getting God's vitamin D, getting those rays, it really does help with your mental health. It helps tremendously. It really does. And when I look back at my pictures before I lost weight, I'm like, I was in denial. Like, I did not see myself as myself. I don't know what I was seeing. I don't know what it was, but now when I look back, or when I look at my clothes, they're huge. I'm like, this is what I was wearing? And again, let me say this. There's nothing wrong with being full figure. There's nothing wrong with being plus size. There's nothing wrong with being 300 pounds, 400 pounds, if that's what works for you. If you can do it and still be healthy. What I was doing, what we were doing was not healthy. We were headed towards a whole lot of issues. So I'm thankful that Mr. Chris had the wherewithal to suggest this. I'm thankful that we stuck with it. I thank God that God has given me an opportunity to, for whatever time he's gonna allow me left to me on this planet, that I will be healthier and I will take better care of myself. This is your temple. Your body is your temple. Anytime that you eat, you either fighting a disease or you're feeding a disease. And I was feeding my disease for so long. And I had to say no more because that was going to leave me. Because it was high blood pressure. That, then, next thing you know, it's going to be high cholesterol. Next thing you know, I might be pre-diabetic. And I'll, so on and so on and so forth and so forth. And I just, I don't want that for myself. I don't want it. And I'm thankful that I'm, that I'm healed and that I'm whole and that I'm where I am today. Thank you so much for watching and listening to my testimony. If you would like to follow me, hey, and Mr. Chris, I am at that I Soul Sister on Instagram. I'm most on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. Uh, that's where you can find me. Mr. Chris is the Soul Brother Show on Instagram. He's Soul Brother Show on Twitter. We also have podcasts.
podcast. I have the De La Soul Sister Show. He has the Soul Brother Show. And that's ChacadelicaSoundSystem.com. And we are also working on a vegan podcast so that we can share our story and share our journey and share some different things with you guys. So then maybe, possibly, you might kind of want to try it and see how it works for you. So thanks again. And I uh, hope to uh, catch up with you guys on the social media streets. All right. Peace out.